three weeks before the U.S. national team resumes World Cup qualifying. The national team is in Sarajevo, Bosnia against the number 13 team of the world. It is a friendly but a big test for the USA and the occasion for at least one major debut for the U.S. national team. And welcome to our U.S. national team action on ESPN2 along with Alexi Lalas. I'm Bob Liar. Here comes the U.S. national team, Alexi. 11 consecutive victories off the Gold Cup championship. About to go down to Costa Rica in three weeks and a chance today for a good barometer match. Yeah, this U.S. national team is on fire right now. And it's almost as if today we're going to see a third version yeah. of this U.S. national team. You had the first one at the beginning of the year that was under pressure, came through and shot right to the top of the hexagonal. Then you had the Gold Cup, a whole new group of players in, boom, win the Gold Cup. Now you have a game here today where we're going to see production predominantly mostly European based players and opportunities and some new faces so I think what that does is it creates depth and it creates competition so this is an important game I mentioned a big debut you mentioned the new faces chief among them center back John Brooks age 20 dual national okay fine dual national he starts in the Bundesliga this is a talent absolutely quality six foot four big center back gonna put uh, players under pressure and that's why he's been brought in because I think Jurgen Klinsmann, the U.S. national team, sees this guy as a potential starter. Now, the question always comes up when we have these dual nationals is, is he a mercenary? Or do you even care if he's a mercenary? Because when players talk about their dream of playing in the World Cup, I want players that not just dream of playing in the World Cup, but dream of playing in the World Cup for the U.S. And those are two different things. It remains to be seen how this player functions on the field and the dynamic on and off the field because ultimately I think it will manifest itself if you don't have some sort of understanding and passion right. for the country that you represent. But he's starting at center back yep. next to Cameron, Jeff Cameron, and it was 18 months of negotiations and conversations that led him to commit to the U.S. And here's the lineup. Absolutely. You see him next to Jeff Cameron. We talked about that competition and depth for the center back spot. If you're Omar Gonzalez or Matt Beasler at home watching, you're saying, all right, Mr. Brooks, let's see what you got. Up top, we have Josie Altidore, and right behind him, Mix Diskarud. A very important game for him. See if he can hold on to that ball, create a flow and a rhythm, and then obviously Jermaine Jones and Michael Bradley, that tandem that we've seen before, back at it again. We're talking about the back line defense. Brad Evans at right back. Let's put you in the Continental Analyst Tire Analyst Corner now and look at Brad Evans, who has proven himself in World Cup qualifying this summer. Absolutely. Brad Evans right now is the starting back for the U.S. national team if the World Cup were to start today. And I don't think a year ago anybody would have been saying that but when we look at the right backs that Jurgen Klinsmann has had at his disposal first the name that comes to the mind Steve Terendolo however Steve Terendolo is injured now and has not played for the US national team since October of 2012 so you go down the list Tim Chandler he won't get on a, he's plane. Out of a picture right he's now. out of the picture right now Jurgen Klinsmann even said he is just not at the level right now and there's other people in front of him then you have Michael Parker it's very interesting because he played so well in the gold cup at that right back position and obviously the team won the, won the gold cup but we talked to Jurgen Klinsmann this morning. He said Brad Evans has an advantage because of what he did in qualifying. Jurgen Klinsmann puts those qualifying games above anything else. So right now, it is Brad Evans' position to lose. So you've got Evans at right back. You've got, of course, in the middle, in the center back position, the, the young man from Hertha Berlin who's making his first start for the United States, John Brooks. All the talk about the U.S. back line. Suddenly there's depth and competition and questions. Bosnia, we're off to Sarajevo next. In Sarajevo, the stadium that back in 1984 at a very different time hosted the opening ceremony of the 1984 Winter Olympic Games and of course the tragedy of the warfare in that area, the siege of the city of Sarajevo which went on for four years and right now 
Bosnia Herzegovina leading their qualifying group comfortably, seeming odds on to go to Brazil at this point. They're in three points clear of Greece. Sorry to point that out to you there, Mr. Uh, backer of the Greek national team. <laughs> And this is a talented team, number 13 in the world. You look at Pjanic, you look at Ibisevic, you look at Edin Dzeko of Manchester City. They are dangerous offensively. Absolutely. Pjanic, uh, Michael Bradley's uh, teammate at Roma, how Michael Bradley and Jermaine Jones shut him down going forward. And then up top, we talked in, in the first segment uh, about that center back pairing uh, and the new center back pairing. They're going to well, be tested. They are going to be tested by a very big boy who is absolutely on fire right now in terms of scoring. So this provides a quality opponent, and it also provides a European opponent. And as we, as we talked about before, Jurgen Klinsmann has talked a lot over the last week about playing at a higher level. Jurgen Klinsmann looks at Europe as the higher level, whether it's for club or whether it's for national teams. And he wants to test his players and his team. And that is why this game is being played. And it's a great test. John Brooks makes his debut for the United States at center back. Maybe a little bit later on, he's not in the starting lineup. We might see Aaron Johansson, the young man who was born in Alabama, eligible to play and has played in youth teams for Iceland. Europe has been very kind to the United States and very fertile ground in the last several years. Remember the Russia match, the mixed discarude goal in stoppage time, that game in Genoa, the historic win for the United States. Yes, they were friendlies. And this match today against Bosnia Herzegovina in Sarajevo, the number 13 club of the world. So things have turned around on the continent for the United States. Yeah, and as I said before, Jurgen Klinsmann looks at these opportunities and he grabs hold of them. And he has been a very, very good and very adamant about saying we want to play these games and we want to test ourselves. Interesting today, now that they're on this 11-game streak, how does he approach this game? Does it even factor in? Does, it, does he even care about this streak in that does he go for the win in, in the way that the team plays? Or does he not care about that and says, it's going to break at some point. I'd rather the individuals do what I told them to do, and collectively we work on some things, and the result is secondary. You're talking about the fact that he places Europe in his experience, and really the reality of world football, at, as that's the top. That's where you test yourself. He has brought in two members of the Seattle Sounders, certainly Brad Evans and mm -hmm. Eddie Johnson, did not call in Clint Dempsey. And you look at what uh, the move, of course, Clint Dempsey, which has shaken up and been a big boon for Major League Soccer, joining the Seattle Sounders. You look at what Jurgen Klinsmann has said historically about playing against the best competition. Also, his comments recently, wishing Dempsey well. But there's a clear s seeming daylight between words and, and, and feeling. You get the sense this was not the best move in Jurgen Klinsmann's mind. But for Clint Dempsey, a, a, a windfall professionally and personally. Well, we're watching a team here tonight that doesn't have the likes of Clint Dempsey, that doesn't have potentially a Landon Donovan who could re be returning to the A team. And how does Clint Dempsey figure in going forward? Listen, this is your captain, and you've just made a decision that even though Jurgen Klinsmann won't say it publicly, you can see and you can read between the lines. When we saw yesterday on our ESPN FC show Roger Bennett interview him and Jurgen Klinsmann talk about playing at a higher level and challenging yourself, he was directly saying not just to Clint Dempsey, but to other players, I want you playing and challenging yourself, especially over in Europe. And Clint Dempsey went the absolute opposite way. So how does he figure into the national team program coming back in as a captain? And ultimately, how does he play? It's going to be interesting to see. Especially when you consider what Klinsman said that infamous quote to the Wall Street Journal last year when Dempsey was at Spurs and Tottenham just missed out on Champions League. But in assessing Dempsey playing well at Tottenham at that point, getting a lot of playing time, said he hadn't done, achieved stuff. He, had, he hadn't done anything, basically, saying you have to continue pushing himself. But Dempsey, comfortable in his decision, not called in for this, certainly, clearly, among players, I mean, on, on that small handful of players inked into the starting 11 in Brazil. Well, you mentioned being comfortable. Jurgen Klinsmann hates yeah, players that are comfortable. Comfort he loves zone talking is about his, is his taking them out of their comfort zone. And to a certain extent, Clint Dempsey's decision puts him in a very comfortable position. Yes, he's going to face other challenges, but uh, I think the only, the only thing that matters is what uh, Jurgen Klinsmann thinks of Clint Dempsey as a player bringing him back. It should be said that over the years, Jurgen Klinsmann has brought plenty of players that are playing in MLS in, and I would argue that part of the reason why this team has done so well is because of the MLS players. So just because a player is playing in MLS doesn't mean that he can't compete and compete at a high level. Beasler and Gonzalez at sure. center back, of sure. course. Uh, Graham Zuzzi, who's now a designated player in Major League Soccer, who's played so well for the national team. This game in Sarajevo, a uh, city where, of course, an assassination 99 years ago sparked World War I, where a four-year siege of this capital city from 1992 to 1996, this horrible centerpiece of a war that took 100,000 lives. And now, a city that, yes, hosted the 1984 Winter Olympic Games as Bosnia-Herzegovina and the United States make their way out 
When you hear the Bosnian anthem in a few minutes, you can listen closely. It is not likely there will be any lyrics. Part of the convoluted, very complicated and emotional politics of the Balkans. They have been negotiating domestically for 13 years to achieve agreement on lyrics for the national anthem. And they've yet to do that. Of course, you will hear the Star Spangled Banner in a few minutes as the United States, three weeks from this coming Friday, will be in San Jose, Costa Rica, in a fixture that always is an emotional one for the USA and Los Tipos. Yep. So big games are, are coming up. And when you see the national anthems played and you see the players standing there and putting their hand over the heart, we talked about this earlier, uh, I think that you need to feel something. You need to feel something even more than when you're playing at a club, when you're putting on your national team jersey, when you are representing your country. And so once again, we talk about uh, uh, the players that have the dual nationality and the possibilities of them, of, of them playing. It's one thing to be a good soccer player, but they also have to have an understanding of the country that they're playing for. John Brooks will be the 61st different player that Jurgen Klinsmann has put on the field for the United States in Klinsmann's two years this month as national team coach. 24,000, a sellout in Sarajevo. Sarajevo, the date line, Bosnia-Herzegovina in charge of Group G. Certainly odds on to go to Brazil. And now the national anthems. States, winners of 11 consecutive matches. So Josie Eldorado scored in four straight matches. The pressure on tonight and a big test against Bosnia. Now their anthem. a member of FIFA only since 1996 and they can taste their first ever World Cup appearance the United States an important test tonight against the 13th best team of the world
Hello everyone and welcome to Sarajevo and the Asim for Hatovic Stadium. Adrian Healy and Taylor Trauman with you as we get set for this important staging post for the United States, right in the heart of the Balkans. Sarajevo may be half a world away from Sao Paulo, but the clock is ticking ever louder, Taylor, and the countdown to the World Cup next summer. Just 300 days to go. The real build-up to Brazil begins here in Bosnia, and the truth is this is exactly the sort of team the United States are going to have to find a way to get a result against next summer. Well, tonight's game is exactly that, Adrian. It's very similar to the Belgium-friendly late May in Cleveland with the good attacking players providing a test defensively. The fact is, when you get an opportunity to play in a hostile environment against a team that's going to be in Brazil next year, you take that. Tonight's an introduction for some new players, but more importantly, a chance for some players that perform very well in the Gold Cup against a better team tonight. Should be fun. Yeah, and that team ranked number 13 in the world by FIFA. Bosnia and Herzegovina. The United States back in the top 20, according to the most recent FIFA rankings, and both nations very handily placed in terms of qualification for next summer. The United States, of course, three points perhaps will be enough for them. Four certainly will to book their spot in Brazil. And Bosnia very well placed in Group G in European qualification. They lead Greece by three points and a seven points. Clear as Slovakia. So every chance Bosnia and Herzegovina are going to make their first appearance at a major tournament next summer. Have a formidable record, along with the United States riding that 11-game consecutive win streak, which is the longest win streak in the world at the moment. Safet Susic in your picture has guided Bosnia to a pretty impressive run too, as the home team are on the attack first and win the first corner of the game. And there's the man they will be most concerned about Taylor, Edin Dzeko, the Manchester City striker. And Ibisevic running off of him, he loves to run those channels, very active inside the 18, this is a tough test. Corner is near post, Jermaine Jones able to corral and lead the United States away from danger. What a remarkable summer it's been for the US, the Gold Cup victory. An 11 consecutive victories since their last defeat. That was uh, what seems like a long time ago now, Taylor. The defeat to Belgium back at the end of May. Here's Bedoya getting his first touch on the ball. Alejandro Bedoya has done well. Here's Johnson. Eddie Johnson with some twisting and turning. Well, it looked so promising just for a fleeting moment there for Eddie Johnson. Well, one of those players you're talking about the success this summer in the Gold Cup is Bedoya. And it's very important tonight that he's active in that final third because when he's active providing service, Josie Altador, Eddie Johnson can be much more effective in that final third. Quickly work corner kick. Discarouge was involved, but it drifts away harmlessly. Time to take a look at tonight's uh, performance player, fueled by Gatorade, and it's John Brooks, Taylor. Yeah, Klinsman has no problem putting young players right into the fire, and tonight John Brooks is that player. Stern test defensively, defending Dzeko. Tonight, his communication and positioning with Jeff Cameron in the middle and Fabi Johnson out wide left will be key. Quite an amazing process uh, that Jürgen Klinsmann was telling us about. Almost a two-year process to bring John Brooks into the U.S. fold. Berlin, born and bred, plays for her to Berlin. And had to uh, fight off some competition from the Germans, who were certainly interested in his services. Here come Bosnia with Salihovic. Sehan Salihovic digging in. And winning a corner. One of many players out there tonight who perform for their clubs in the Bundesliga. And that's the matchup tonight. You saw Alexi Lawless in the pregame. His continental tire analyst corner was the right back situation. It's a huge game tonight for Brad Evans defending Salihovic coming forward. That's one of the spots of interest, isn't it, for the for the United States? Right back. Seems to be coming down to a battle between Brad Evans and Michael Parker, Taylor. I still think Steve Chirondolo will have something to say come World Cup time ten months from now. Yeah, his injury was ill-timed, wasn't it? Bikakic. 
Bosnia's current ranking, the highest they've ever achieved under FIFA. They've only been a footballing nation since 1996. Yeah, playing here in Sarajevo at the uh, Asim Vahatovic Stadium. They actually play most of their games away from here at uh, a smaller city in a smaller stadium, Zenica, where they have developed a, a fearsome reputation. They haven't lost at home, Bosnia, since September of 2010. Nine games unbeaten. Overall, their last defeat actually came in the United States. That was a game played in Chicago in May of 2012. They lost to Mexico. Salihovic and Senad Lulic will be the pairing on the near side. Bosnia's left. Lulic will be very familiar to Michael Bradley, their opponents in Rome. Roma and Lazio. But Michael Bradley's teammate for Roma Pjanic is the one that Jermaine Jones and Michael Bradley at all times have to keep an eye out for him. And here is Bradley right on cue. Played with uh, Miralem Pjanic, didn't he, uh, in the recent MLS All-Star game? Is that what that was? <laughs> Looked more like a training session for Roma. Yeah, Mr. Francesco Totti enjoyed himself a little bit that much that night, didn't he, as uh, the U.S. Make waves here. Brad Evans' cross is cut out. Now Dzeko. It's hard to overemphasize how big a star Edin Dzeko is around here. It's a big target too. It didn't quite reach him. Now that cross finds its way to Eddie Johnson. Johnson trying to dribble and in trouble and Jekko is through the flag is down Howard out to meet him Jekko second time of asking and Bosnia and Herzegovina strike early but it was defensive suicide really by the United States well and early on in this game I, I feel that Brooks and Cameron have done a good job at tracking Ibis, Ibisevic and Jekko up front but this is the reality of Eddie Johnson, you are 20 yards from your own goal. You cannot lose this ball at top of your 18. Because now you lose it immediately. The ball is right down your throats. And Jekko does a wonderful job of timing that run. He stalls his run that half a second. Tim Howard does a good job. Now, Howard is furious right now because Brooks and Cameron have to do a better job of getting to that end line and doing anything they can to stop this rebound. Yeah, nobody was there to pressure Jekko, were they, for the rebound after Howard had made this initial save. But Adrian, watch, he does the first job, but that's where the retreat has to be a little bit quicker from Brooks and Cameron. Uh, and in Jekko, who is more than a hero in these parts, has just scored his 30th international goal. The Bosnian Diamonds, they call him. But... Uh, it's really a self-inflicted wound for the U.S. Well, a testing start. An interesting test of Jürgen Klinsmann's squad's resolve and their resiliency. Just the sort of test they're likely to be facing next summer. Simovic playing it long. Tim Howard, who's captain tonight for the United States, out to collect. And Adrian, this game is very similar to how they started in Russia last year. Ninth minute goal in Russia, but they came back. Here's a chance. Oh, Altidore had done really well. Shrugged off the first defender and then trying to lay it off instead of going for goal. But part of these friendlies is an understanding and a learning experience for some young players and other players are coming back. And I bring up that game last year with Russia, down to nothing. They come back with a late goal from Michael Bradley. This is still plenty of game left in here. That's an intriguing U.S. squad, isn't it? An interesting mix of seasoned veterans 
recent additions under Jurgen Klinsmann and the latest batch of brand new recruits, all hoping to make a, a great first impression. John Brooks is the only new cap amongst the starters. Here's Altidor, Johnson, something to make amends for perhaps. Eddie Johnson bursting into the clear. It was uh, an awkward challenge, but in the end, an effective one from Emir Spahic. This is the second chance, though, early on in this first half that Eddie Johnson has found himself inside that 18 one one Has to be a little bit more decisive with that first touch. Oh, an excellent day of soccer all round for you today on ESPN2. Uh, later on, we'll have uh, Gio Dos Santos of Mexico taking on Didier Drogba and the Ivory Coast. That starts uh, tonight at 9 Eastern here on ESPN2. Also live on the Watch ESPN app. And in Dzeko, spreading it wide for Bikakic. Dzeko is everywhere, isn't he? He's uh, funneled that one through, the cross is deep. No chances taken by Brad Evans. One of two Seattle Sounders players in the starting lineup. The only MLS players called up by Jurgen Klinsmann. They had quite a journey, didn't they? Klinsman's opposite number, Safet Pape Susic. Simovic with the corner, it's up for grabs. Decent header by Jermaine Jones. To get rid of it. Cycled through Miral and Pjanic. He's Michael Bradley's teammate at Roma. Lots of familiarity between the two squads. A total of 12 players from the German Bundesliga between the two teams. And then there's the English Premier League connections and those in Italy too. Jurgen Klinsmann. Selecting his squad from 21 different clubs in 10 countries. And he's very clear in his message, isn't he, Taylor Jürgen Klinsmann, about the spot still up for grabs in the 23 next summer. He said if he wrote down a 23 today for the World Cup, it would be very different from the one He's likely to write down next May. Well, especially when you look at the net that he's pulling around. I mean, John Brooks is now starting tonight, and there's 10 months. A lot can happen, whether it's injuries, whether it's form. You know, you look at Clint Dempsey moving to Seattle, Josie Altidore moving to Sunderland. These are all things that play a part, come and name in that roster next year. Same time, you sense the urgency. 10 months sounds a lot, but for a national team manager, it really isn't. Only a handful of occasions to get the team together. Of course, they've got to complete the job of qualifying, but... It's a decent build-up this time. Mixed Discarouge, just a little off-kilter with his pass. Johnson was available. Oh, they've developed a habit of winning, haven't they, United States? This 11-game uh, winning streak has only seen them trail once. As Brooks gets his first solid touch. How about that? 11 games only once behind, and that was early on against Cuba in the Gold Cup. Pjanic with the foraging work, and now Misimovic is on his way. Actually, it's Jacko. Two for company. And they needed two of them. The problem right now for the United States, Adrian, is immediately when that ball turns over in the midfield, Dzeko or Ibisevic up front are easy to run in behind. There has to be immediate ball pressure when that ball turns over. Here's Discarouge. Mix Discarouge, the Norwegian-born player from Rosenborg, who's 
really come into the reckoning in recent months. When you just have that feeling, don't you, that he's going to get an opportunity with the injury to Stuart Holden. Actually really announced himself uh, the last trip to Europe, didn't he? That 2-2 draw with Russia and that late, late equaliser. The United States unbeaten in their last three trips to Europe under Jurgen Klinsmann. The draw at Russia, the victory against Italy and the win against Slovenia. Is Diskarud not able to make anything happen? Bosnia can spring forward. So Senad Lulic on the near side. Jeko. First time cross. Bradley is there to meet it, but at the expense of a corner. You know, you watch Jeko play, and you often think, well, he's so big and strong that he just plays with his back to goal, but he's running the channels very well early on. Everything going forward for Bosnia is off of him, play it into him, two touch, get it out wide, then get it forward. It's amazing, really, that he wasn't deemed worthy to start much under Roberto Mancini last season. Well, I think the signing of Navas is going to make Jekko score about five to ten more goals for City this year. The referee is Damir Skomina from Slovenia. And in Dzeko, who was born here in Sarajevo, still has a home here. He's the top scorer currently in European World Cup qualifying. With eight goals in this campaign, Bosnia overall are the top scorers in Europe. They've blasted in 23. Now the US move breaks down, Dzeko has gone too soon this time. Cameron and Brooks and Evans all came out. The advanced high line did its job. World Cup qualifying resuming for the United States in September. And the trip to Costa Rica and then that home game against Mexico four days later. Jermaine Jones and Michael Bradley. Likely to be, you would think, the starting pairing. about that Bradley Jones pairing the uh, circuit breaker and the and the power source in midfield Miss Jones onto Discarud nice little move if he can get there he can and was he bundled over he wasn't well Discarud went down it was certainly under some duress and Demi Escamina saying the challenge was a fair one and instead of the end, other end it's uh, Abisevic threatening to break through. Brad Evans. Amazing to think he and Eddie Johnson were both very much on the outside looking in when Jurgen Klinsmann took over the US national team. He's done really well. Stake a regular claim, and of course, uh, Clint Dempsey, their new teammate. And it's one of those not here, Landon Donovan. Some of the major MLS players not called in this time by Jurgen Klinsmann. Well, finally, the United States do get a decision in their favour. But they, see, they, everyone wants to talk about Josie out the door on a goal-scoring streak and how well he's playing, but this is what Jurgen Klinsmann wants from Josie out the door. big, strong, physical, being a menace up front. And we go back to this play. If Diskarud goes down now, that's a foul. But the fact that he stays up, tries to play, and Zukanovic gets away with one. Love the turn from Diskarud inside the 18 here. Right now. 
Uh, I think Zukanovic was lucky to get away with that, Taylor. Both inside and outside the penalty area. But to go back to Josie Altidore, jo Josie has been talked about with Jurgen Klinsmann of just being completing his game, and it's not just about scoring goals. Yes, that's what he's paid for, but in a game like tonight, what he's paid to do is just be a minute, draw fouls. That's exactly what he's done right here. And Altidore looks interested in taking the free kick himself. It's a four-man wall for Bosnia. Right-footed effort, flicks off the top of the wall and behind. And the United States will have their first corner. You just get the feeling that tonight's game is going to be a sample of what this year is going to be like at Sunderland for Josie Altidore. At times it's going to be a grind. How can he have an effect on the game? Good corner from Bradley. Right into the danger zone, but Bosnia dealt with it. Up for grabs. And Eddie Johnson leaning in. Well, Josie Altidore's Sunderland debut will potentially come this weekend. Will be at home to Fulham. He says he's ready for it. He's ready for a return to the Premier League, Taylor. Indicating that perhaps his last trip there came a little too early in his career. He was only 19. Well, and he's also coming off a season where he scored 30-plus goals. That's fascinating, isn't it, that uh, one of his ex-teammates has it out, Mark. Aaron Johansson now part of this squad. We may see him later in this game. Man who made the uh, switch via FIFA. That clearance came just a day ago. Jacko with another piercing run. Plays it low! And Abisovic was the man running into meet it at the near post. A man with some American roots. Then Abisovic. And St. Louis roots too, Taylor. Yeah, but Jekko is just putting on a clinic on how to run the back line. And immediately when Jekko turns, Fabian Johnson, he needs to be a little bit quicker here. But it's amazing the space for a big man that Jekko's had in getting inside, getting him behind that back line of the United States. Never seemed to fully have the trust of Roberto Mancini, did he, Eddie But Jekko? see this run right here, Adrian. He takes that little angle to make sure he stays onside. Has not put a foot wrong so far, midway through the first half. The United States still trailing by a goal to nil. Michael Bradley trying to do something about it, but losing out in the midfield melee to his club teammate, Pjanic. Almost won it back, Diskarud. Great work from Diskarud, though, and that's what was missing in the first 15 minutes, is immediately, Adrian, when this ball turns over, put pressure on there. Michael Bradley loses that ball, but right there as a teammate, you have to be immediately reactive. Well done. Diskarud, who played in a big Norwegian league game this uh, past weekend, it was first against second. His club, Rosenborg, against Strom's Godset. 2 2 draw. He's very much in mid season form. A lot of these players, the European based ones, just coming into the start of their season. Not so Diskarud. Bradley, who is at the dawn of his second season with Roma. Bradley winning cap number 80 tonight for the US. Over the top towards Altidore. He was watched very carefully by Zukanovic. Evans doing battle, Bedoya there to help out. A little bit too much battling from Bedoya. He's another who's made a very positive move this summer. Going to French football, he's going to be playing with Nantes.
25 minutes gone in Sarajevo. Adrian Healy and Taylor Twelman with you, so glad you could join us. As Jürgen Klinsmann starts his third full year in charge. The uh, two-year anniversary was just a couple of days ago. Great interview with Jürgen Klinsmann on ESPNFC.com. He talked about Landon Donovan and Omar Gonzalez along with Clint Dempsey. Yeah, do check that out if you haven't seen it. Roger Bennett was over there for ESPN FC. And the full interview is up on the site. Now on the move, it's Lulic. Cameron mopping things up. Good win by Altidore, and he may be the beneficiary of it. He was surely all back there. It was Sparhitch. Who had a piece of Josie Altidore, the Bosnian captain, and he will be booked. Can't have any complaints either, and doesn't. And this is the type of play that we saw from Josie Altidore all over the summer. Good first touch, layoff to Disgrude, great ball in behind. That's what you want as a center forward. You want to be a nuisance the entire game. And Spahic has had his hands full for 27 minutes. Well, they've uh, shook and made up, but uh, Sparhitch and his transgression giving the United States another chance from a free kick. Yeah, but now think about it. So now you're only in the 27th minute, and you're going against your center back. He's got a yellow card. So now Josie, over the next 10 to 15 minutes, get in behind, test Spahic immediately. It's Bradley who takes command, looking for Altidore, but... There's Dzeko back to tidy up for Bosnia. Bradley. Wide is Johnson. And it's Eddie Johnson and Fabian Johnson together. On it's been left. a slow start though for Eddie Johnson. Bradley, if the quick give and go, it pops out to Jermaine Jones. Quick change of angle. Starting to enjoy a little more possession now, though, United States. So Sunday, August the 25th is not a date to be missed. We'll be there for Clint Dempsey's home debut, Seattle hosting the Portland Timbers. The MLS game of the week, Sunday, August the 25th at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, ESPN2. That will be something very special indeed, Taylor. Uh, it's going to be our game of the year. 68,000 people in Seattle. Should be fun. Well, there you have it, folks. A collector's item, a misplayed pass by Jacko. Bisevic chiseling away on the far side, the man who uh, spent a lot of his youth same place as you did, Taylor, St. Louis. Boy, college freshman of the year just came on the scene quickly. Jacko making the run near post. Cameron was able to track him stride for stride. Jeff Cameron and Jacko were talking to each other just a couple of nights ago after the two teams had arrived in Sarajevo, they know each other well from the Premier League. Stoke City and Manchester City, not too far apart geographically. Fifth corner for Bosnia. Near post, oh, and the bullet header. It's Vidad Ibisevic. And Bosnia are two goals to the good. The man from St. Louis doing the damage against the United States. And this is exactly what the 2008 Bosnian Football of the Year does consistently. He stays active. The first corner's dealt with from the United States and Jeff Cameron. It's cleared out. But Ibisevic stays active. He loses his initial mark. So now he's reacting to not only that first ball in, but now the second ball, Adrian. So the first ball's dealt with. Ooh, I'm not sure he's not offside here. 
close, wasn't it? Extremely close, but what he does a good job of is look right across that line and find where Fabian Johnson is. And then this is a simple finish for a player of his caliber. The man who went to Roosevelt High School in St. Louis, who spent a year at St. Louis University, was the NCAA Freshman of the Year, Ben Adebisevic, and then got signed by PSG and began his European footballing adventure. It's his 18th goal for Bosnia. His family still lives in St. Louis. Half an hour in, and that second goal is a, is a hammer blow, really, for the U.S. Taylor. They've just perhaps enjoyed the most productive spell of the game, just up to that goal. Certainly in terms of possession. But you hear coaches talk about defending set pieces all the time, Adrian, and against a team like Bosnia, defending set pieces doesn't mean just dealing with the first ball. It's often dealing with the second and third ball coming in. Fabian Johnson, Eddie Johnson, have had a tough time on the left-hand side this first half. The first goal, Eddie Johnson back giveaway. That second one, Fabian Johnson needs immediate ball pressure. That's only 18 yards from goal. Well, Jones is barreling run. In the end, Peters out. This Bosnia and Herzegovina side have made uh, really steady progression. Over the last few years, they were so close to qualifying for South Africa in the last World Cup, so close to making it to Poland and Ukraine as well. Lost in the playoffs to Portugal on both occasions. It take uh, a gargantuan collapse for them not to make Brazil. But see, here's a good test for a young kid like John Brooks. When this ball goes back to the center backs of Bosnia, part of his communication skills at center back is get that line forward, push that line forward. It can't just be Jeff Cameron. The scoreline may be 2 nothing, but there's plenty of teaching lessons, learning lessons for young players in this game, and Jurgen will point to that at halftime. What an amazing few days for John Brooks. His Bundesliga debut this past weekend, and then his national team debut just a few days later. Looks the part, doesn't he, though? Six foot four. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Very smooth and fluid player. Composed and being six foot four, we've seen him actually run with Jekko in behind. He's got quick feet. It's a process that started with a United 20 or under 20 United States camp. In November of 2011, that was the first time John Brooks was in the U.S. fold. Here's Jermaine Jones. To part a thrilling 3-3 uh, draw for Schalke over the weekend, Jermaine Jones. United States throw. Brad Evans with it. On from Altidore. Here's Eddie Johnson. Bradley and Johnson trying to make things happen, but Sparhitch is there. Sparhitch giving Jermaine Jones real problems, and he's won it. The break is on, Jacko. Jones is left down. There's an opening here for Bosnia. All right, through the middle went Miralem Pjanic, and he couldn't hit the target. Just bad giveaways in the midfield, though. Jermaine Jones with ball pressure in the middle, loses that ball, and now it's right down the throats of the United States. three or four times where they've had a little bit of possession in that final third. They knock it back either to Michael Bradley, Jermaine Jones, Miss Dis Discarude. 
you can't give the ball away. Why not keep possession? Knock it back to Brooks or Cameron, but you cannot give a ball away right in the middle of the field. Here's another one. Now Jones is laboring a bit at the moment. Ball gone away from him and he's slow to recover. Lulich. Well, he'd uh, rather like to have that one back. It was Salihovic. Uh, ESPN's presentation of US soccer is brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible. Adrian Healy and Taylor Twelman here with you. Coming to you from uh, Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. A game that's been a sellout for quite a while here. 35,000 capacity. Some foraging work there. By Josie Altidore. Good run around the back by Brad Evans. Evans continuing to display his attacking metal. And you're going to ask me in about 10 minutes what's the positive of this first half. It's number 17, Josie Altidore. Up front by himself for the majority of this first half, but extremely active, causing a lot of problems right now. The question is, can they capitalize on him? Only the second corner, Bradley's service. And a follow-up shot, which was uh, ambitious, shall we say. Alejandro Bedoya scored his first ever United States goal in that pre-Gold Cup friendly against Guatemala. Jürgen Klinsmann described Bedoya's move to Nantes as a wonderful one for him. Moving away from uh, Scandinavian football to French. Really used the Gold Cup final as a, a shot window, didn't he, Alejandro Bedoya? I felt the semi-final against Honduras was his best game, though, Adrian. It really was. Set up the winner for Breck Shea in that final. Here's Evans. Winning his 13th cap. Scored that vital game winner against Jamaica. The United States' first ever road win at the office back in early June. Just brief flashes, Taylor. Occasional signs of life for the United States. A lot of hard run, work and running, as you mentioned, from Josie Altidore. Altidore, remember, on a four-game scoring streak. She would love to continue. It would be a record if he does. Here's Jacko. Not this time. Brooks... Wasn't going to get fooled. And our first real opportunity to see Brooks defend one on one. And he passed with flying colors. See, this is the part of the game, though, where you want to see Diskarud kind of find some seams in here. Good move from Bedoya to tuck inside. But it can't all be just Michael Bradley looking for every seam. The United States have found space when it's been 2 3 touch through the midfield. Evans with the curler. And a little bit of a flourish. The diving header away from Spahic. Still looking for their first shot on goal of this first half. The US. Evans. Long throw. Begovic had a clear sight of it. The Stoke City goalkeeper. And she flew with Tim Howard, the pair of them. Yeah, flight from Manchester out here. If Stoke City didn't have them last year, you'd think they're in the BPL this year? <laughs> <laughs> well, they've uh, done a pretty good job hoovering up American talent, haven't they? Right, but with how defensive they play, you need a goalkeeper that stands on his head more often than not. Yeah.
here's the overlap. And Johnson. It's Fabian Johnson who uh, retrieves it. Did well there. And Jones. Only a hopeful stab into the penalty area. And the break is on. What a touch. Bosnia could be so fluid here. Brooks was well stationed. He was last man back there, John Brooks. He had to intervene. Doyer's touch, actually finding its way to Eddie Johnson, and he's upended. Fantastic electricity around this ground. This Bosnian crowd really believe that their team are onto something special. Bradley trying to silence them with the free kick, but routinely dealt with. Bikakic's header away, and once again, Bosnia look uh, oh so threatening on the counter attack. Back come the US though, that's Jones to Diskarud. The great recovery run defensively from Bedoya there. Because that then allows Eddie Johnson, Discrude, and Josie Altidore to get forward on the counter. But if he is not there on that long ball forward, then the United States is in trouble. A lot of the Gold Cup, Bedoya had his way going forward. And I think that was one of the things Jurgen Klinsman talked about this morning is that you want to see him in a different environment, a game that he may have to defend a little bit more than he's used to. Tonight he's done a decent job. Jones, a pocket of space here for Diskarud, who's one of the more active players for the US. Johnson working his way inside, and will be another free kick, a whole series of them in the last few moments for the US. Pjanic appending Fabian Johnson. Well, in this first half, they've had a couple dangerous set pieces and a quick one here from the States. Oh, and that was good, good quick thinking, out the door. Simply trying to muscle his way through. Well, and I like that because three or four of those you've set up, and Bosnia is allowed to set up their back four, but what you've also realized is they missed the Landon Donovan or Graham Zuzzi on those set pieces. Someone has to get near post in front of Jekko here. Bradley to the near post. Cameron came in to meet it. Couldn't steer it on target, though. Don't go anywhere at half time, by the way, because because we got Bob Lee and Alexi Lala standing by. Not only highlights of this game, but highlights of other internationals taking place around the world. We got England, Scotland, Germany, Paraguay, and Italy, Argentina to bring you. So we look at uh, a goal from Vidal Ibišević, Vido, as he's called, in St. Louis. You used to scrimmage against him, didn't you, Taylor? Yeah, we had a couple pickup games. He was the 18-year-old kid, so we made him get the water and move the goals and grab the balls. And then, uh, you know, he moved on to Europe and played in World Cup qualifiers, and we're like, okay, never mind. <laughs> 73 goals in the Bundesliga. He's but in all scored. seriousness, Adrian, it's one of those players that I think the U.S. regret not getting him into the program earlier. Yeah. I mean, he was in St. Louis from a young kid, a young age. Imagine him up front with Josie Altador right now. has always said in interviews that he would have answered the call had it come, but it never did. Bradley. Fending off Abisovic this time. Jones has had a rough first half. He spent a lot of it on the ground. He's helped up there by Pjanic. And that will do it, so plenty to chew over for 
Jürgen Klinsmann and the United States team who trail by two goals to nil here in Sarajevo. The early breakthrough from Edin Dzeko and then Ven Adebisevic doubling their advantage. Both the strikers on target for Bosnia and Herzegovina. The United States have a hole to climb out of. Let's go back to Bob Lee and Alexi Lalas. Thank you, Adrian and Taylor. The last time the United States played in Europe, it was against Russia. They fell down 2-0. They were able to come back and grab a 2-2 draw with a goal in stoppage time. But at this moment, you'd have to say the United States having the same sort of day in Sarajevo that Archduke Ferdinand had about 99 years ago. It's not going well. Yeah, not a great game. And I can't help but think that there are some U.S. national team players that aren't with this team right now that are watching this game. And if you are, be very happy that you're not here right now. You do not want to be associated with this except for the fact that this is the exact type of team and play that the U.S. will ultimately be judged against when they play in a World Cup. This is the, this is There's going to be somebody like this, this in their group, like right? A group a stage game in a World right. Cup. The team that can match them physically, can match them technically, can match them tactically, and is going to make it difficult. And all it needs is one opportunity. We saw it. One yeah. mess up. Boom, thank you very much, goal, goal, goal. They, they, this is a perfect game for the U.S. to play. They're not showing well individuals. I thought Josie Altidore had a very, very good half holding the ball up and being dangerous in his particular position. But all in all, we talked about mistakes. Eighth minute, here it comes. EJ, he coughs it up. Can't do that. You can't do that. Misimovic, Checo. Bingo. Outside and, okay, he gets, Tim Howard makes the first save, but it's interesting, on both of these goals, if you look at Brad Evans, he's holding his arm up. We've all done it as defenders. It is absolute desperation. At times, you can force the offside, but this was just emergency defending, and then... Ibisevic from St. Louis. You got a mark, you got a mark. Out wide, and this wasn't the first time that the ball went out wide and got played into the middle. So, Bosnia Herzegovina dominating the United States and obviously goals in the 8th minute and the 30th minute. Tonight, in another friendly, Mexico in New Jersey taking on the Ivory Coast. And oh, what a storyline with El Tri. They need to show and show well. John Sutcliffe with a report on how Mexico are approaching tonight's match. Coming up.
Tonight in New Jersey, Mexico against the Ivory Coast. We have it on ESPN2 at 9 Eastern Time. So much pressure on Chepo de la Torre, the manager of L3. John Sutcliffe is with the Mexican side. A lot of pressure on Chepo de la Torre. There's only 23 days left for that key game at home against Honduras and Estadio Azteca. Tonight here at MetLife against Ivory Coast, they just want to get some confidence. Chepo's been getting a lot of pressure. They tactically, he has to change. The teams in CONCACAF know what to expect from Mexico. I've been told there'll be a 4-3-3. Some players gain the opportunity at midfield, Fernando Arce. Angel Reina, who didn't have one single minute in Confederations Cup, he's a leading scorer and who will start tonight. And also... Cristian Jimenez, Argentinian-born player who has been naturalized a Mexican citizen. He's a roving attacker. He's a player that could make some difference. There's no question that he could be the difference, at least for tonight, so Mexico can get some confidence leading to that pressure pack game upcoming in September against Honduras. Back to you. All right, John, thanks. So with Mexico going the mercenary route as well. Jimenez coming into the team. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're desperate right now, and we joke about it a lot in terms of the history and who cares what's going on with Mexico. The reality is that I want Mexico to qualify. The World Cup is better with Mexico in it, and I think ultimately they will. But this year has been an absolute disaster, and we'll see if Chepo makes it through. They are sitting right now, Mexico, third in the group. The group led by the United States will be. We can't wait to get to Columbus September 10th. What an atmosphere it will be. We've got... The United States trailing Bosnia. There's Checo's goal in the eighth minute. We'll check action from around the world and get you back to Sarajevo after this. We've got a double shot of soccer. Love for you, ESPN FC, right after we're finished at 4.30 Eastern, then again at 5.30 Eastern this afternoon here on 
ESPN2 around the globe. Paraguay just taking a 3-2 lead on Germany, and they got the lead. Wilson Batoni, great ball here. Look at this nice little ball. Whoa. Nunez. And then Mueller in the 18th minute comes back. Tomas Mueller at that point getting Germany on the board after that goal by Nunez. They, see, yeah, they said, there it is. You can go over the top, we can go over the top too. And Paraguay have just added another goal. <laughs> so it's 3 2 Germany losing it home at the moment. Gonzalo Igain. Does he have a powerful shot here? Here you go, exhibit A. In Rome. Cutting in. Just a little daylight. That's all that man needs. Doing it in Italy. A day after Mario Balotelli sat with His Holiness, the Pope, who's a great football fan. Then. England, Scotland, Theo Walcott in the 29th minute after Joe Hart gave up a sloppy and weak goal. Watch this work. Here's an assertive winger doing his thing. Speed, speed, speed. And then Bills. recognizing when, yeah, when you recognize when you cut back, get that shot off. Josie Altidore should take a look at that. There's a Walcott in the 29th minute. Bosnia. Ibisevic with the second goal, cracking at home. Young man who played at St. Louis University in All-America. Playing for Bosnia-Herzegovina and the United States trail 2-0 at the half. We'll be back. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks to Bob and Alexi, Adrian Healy and uh, Taylor Twelman with you. Getting set for the second half here at uh, the Asima for Hatovic Stadium. And a uh, change, we're being told, for the United States. We're going to see Edgar Castillo at the start of the second half. The United States will then turn into a 4-4-2 and move Eddie Johnson up front next to Josie Altidore. 
So Edgar Castillo for Mix Discarouge. Here's the only United States switch. We will uh, confirm any Bosnian ones for you. As soon as we have them, that's the Bosnian coach, Safet Pape Susic, making his way across the pitch. He is a, a Paris Saint-Germain legend, voted their best ever player in a recent poll. Played in the same World Cup as Jurgen Klinsmann did uh, for the old Yugoslavia back in 1990. There's been some dispute about the Bosnian second goal at halftime, Taylor. Misimovic's cross to Abisevic. Was Abisevic slightly offside? Well, initially, you heard me call the replay. I, I felt like he was off. Now, the problem is the angle of the replay is on a little bit of a diagonal, but you then go on Twitter and the power of social media, and you see the still photos. He looked offside to me in the second goal, let alone the push in the back of Brooks. A uh, double infringement, perhaps, that he got away with. Uh, Adnan Zahirovic is going to come on at the start of the second half. There is uh, Castillo. Make his way out. He's going to be winning his 13th cap for the U.S. It looks like Castillo's coming in. We'll play left back. That'll push Fabian Johnson wide left. And we saw at the end of that first half, Fabian Johnson is much more comfortable going forward than he is defending one-on-one. Looks like three changes for uh, Bosnia. Sunic is going to come on. Tony Sunic wearing number 23. Zahirovic, I told you about. And Versajevic is the third. Well, make that four. Miroslav Stevanovic has decided to come on too. <laughs> it's on the fly, my man, on the fly. Always this way with international friendlies, isn't it? Always a delight for commentators. Actually, this August FIFA International Friendly Day is about to be done away with. This is the uh, last one before uh, FIFA abolishes it post-World Cup next year. It's always been an awkward time to schedule friendlies for... Club team managers, more so the national team managers, isn't that, isn't that always the case? But particularly in August, this one makes no sense. Yeah, the build-up. It really to, doesn't. Build-up to European season. Some have just kicked off, and others about to get underway. We are underway here at the start of the second half. We will tidy up who has uh, come off for Bosnia as we progress here. The United States trying to dig themselves out. And a two-goal hole. Fabian Johnson. The more advanced role, it appears, in the second half. And immediately tripped by uh, Versajevic. Fabian Johnson into his third year playing with Hoffenheim. He survived a relegation playoff in the German Bundesliga last year. Held on to their top flight status by beating Kaiserslautern. The debut of John Brooks here tonight. By the way, brings the total number of players who have featured under Jurgen Klinsmann to 61. And he's actually called in a total of 70 in his time in charge. And Brooks is the 17th player to make his debut under Jurgen Klinsmann. But the first, actually, this year since the first game of the year. Friendly against Canada. It seems a long time ago, doesn't it? That's a little ball over the top that has the US defence backpedalling in a hurry. Stevanovic, who was uh, tracking it down, he's come on for Abisevic. Well, and to clarify something I said in the first half about Abisevic playing for the US men's national team, US soccer has told me he doesn't have a green card nor he's a citizen. All I was saying is that, yeah, the U.S. would like him, but well, so would 40 to 50 other countries. <laughs> Lots of countries would have loved to have had his service. As the service from the corner comes in, Jacko is still out there. And I'm not sure he wanted to wait for that whole process of becoming a citizen. So, sorry if I misspoke in that first half.
Uh, I think we mentioned his family still very much part of the St. Louis scene, big Bosnian community in St. Louis. His sister is a citizen. That's a pretty short career, isn't it, as a top flight international player? You can't blame someone for grabbing an opportunity when it comes their way. Tony Sunic, actually plays uh, his club football in the Ukraine. Ashmir Begovic, who she had his flirtation with uh, Canada, ex-Canadian under-20 player, actually played in the under-20 World Cup in 2007. It's really the presence of Lars Hirschfield in goal for Canada that kept Begovic out of the picture and led it back to Bosnia. Really quite remarkable city, this. As you look at the crowd here in Sarajevo. Corner kick for the US. And Evans will leave it for Michael Bradley. Bradley's out swinger, and they're appealing for handball. The referee appeared to have a long, hard look at that. Lots of appeals from all the US players. Be uh, excellent to have another look at that. Over the top it goes. This time Jekko is trapped offside. Now they've got themselves better organised at the back. The US, Jeff Cameron and John Brooks, playing that high line. And Brooks wins that one. That hits Sunjic right in the left arm. Now, watch this angle. Oh no, it's kind of close off yeah. that chest. I'm okay with the no call actually. And perhaps the distance between ball and arm. And it was initially headed, was what saved the defender. Good to see John Brooks though getting forward, getting involved in the attack as well. The 20 year old making his debut. He scored on his Bundesliga debut over the weekend, John Brooks for Hertha Berlin. The United States 11 game winning streak stretching back to late May is in some peril here. It's the longest win streak in the world at the moment as Eddie Johnson. Doesn't quite get that right. Not only the longest winning streak currently in the world, but by some distance too, Brazil have won six games in a row and they're in second place. trying to uh, marshal the situation on the far side. Little chest down. Well, it popped up, didn't it? Stevanovic never really got over the ball. And who plays his club football in Spain. She belongs to Sevilla, but plays on long with Elche. Janic getting a little talking to here.
Just so skillful. I mean, we saw that the entire All-Star game against the MLS All-Stars. His movement off the ball, the passing clinic they put on in the midfield. Be very curious to see if Gareth Bale ends up going to Real Madrid. I wouldn't be shocked if Pjanic is at Tottenham. If you listen to rumors or whatever that is. <laughs> it's been hard to avoid them. Pretty much all summer, isn't it? Well, the transfer window. Tell you, would be glad to know. Only has another two and a half weeks to stay open. We'll turn from Stevanovic, who's been very active since his introduction. Bikakic is still out there. against Zukanovic. I think referee gave handball. Zukanovic had just seen came off his shoulder. Let's have another look. He was right. Bradley forced to funnel it back to Evans. Here's Brooks. Bradley looking long, great run from Altidore, if he can get there, surely the US back in it! Eddie Johnson has done it, and the United States have halved the deficit here in Sarajevo. Well, it was so simple, Taylor, over the top from Bradley, the little touch from Altidore, and Johnson did the rest. Yeah, but give credit to that man right there, because his tactical switch at halftime, now it basically just means a man-up game, 11 against 11, and we saw this a couple times, in the first half with Josie trying to teeter on that back line. If Eddie Johnson's not up front, he's not here to finish this ball. Great run from Josie just to get any kind of touch on that. But because they are in a 4-4-2, Eddie Johnson's right there. United States right back into this ball game. How about that ball from Michael Bradley as well? Put it on a dime, didn't he? Perfectly placed. Right into the stride of Altidore, whose soft touch teed up Eddie Johnson and Eddie Johnson Ironically, has just surpassed Josie Altador and his 18th international goal. I mean, this is deja vu all over again, as Yogi Berra would say. <laughs> I mean, this is Russia last year. Yep. Struggle in the first half, trying to figure it out. You make a couple switches, make a tactical switch, and then boom, you get that early goal in the second half. Bosnia and Herzegovina with the corner. Brooks. Okay, shaky early moments like the rest of his defence, but Brooks has looked very accomplished. And that's also a product of this friendly, though, as well, because now at halftime, Bosnia makes four switches. It kind of changes the rhythm, the flow that they were in in that first half. Nicely cut out by Castillo, Jermaine Jones. Jones trying to wheel around in midfield, but was outnumbered. Over the top goes Checo, offside though. Harley finished with a flourish, ripple of excitement around the ground, but only amongst those who didn't see the flag. Looks like just a yard offside behind Jeff Cameron. Good line from the United States because that high line in the first half wasn't there. Jekyll had his way going forward, but that back four was in tune with each other. But how about the finish after the whistle? Almost woo, ripped the back of the net off, didn't it? At the other end, there was this opportunity, which Eddie Johnson at the beating of the keeper initially, and then Bedoya couldn't keep his shot down. See, now it's a different task, though, for the Bosnian back four, because now you have to handle two center forwards. You know I love myself some 4-4-2 yep. up front, especially when Josie and Eddie Johnson are active right from the onset. 
And it's a rejigged Bosnian defence as well. Trying to cope with them. With uh, Sunjic and uh, Zahirovic having come on. Eddie Johnson's goal, by the way, his fourth goal of the summer. And they started in that win uh, over Panama back on June the 11th. And this is his 13th game this year yep. for the U.S. men's national team. Most of all the players for the U.S. It's been a, kind of a coming out party. I would last year was with MLS, but this year for the United States. In that first half, he had a couple of shady touches in the midfield, but this second half, he's come on much more comfortable up front with Josie. Well, you wonder with the arrival of Clint Dempsey in Seattle, is Eddie Johnson going to have to play that role? Is Josie out the door? Josie has done it again. He is a record breaker. Five goals in five games for Altidore. And the United States have turned this around. That is a sign of a confident striker. In the first half, I talked about all the stuff besides scoring goals, being strong, running the channels, being extremely active. But that, as a center four, gets you in the mindset. So when I get that one opportunity, which is right here, one touch finish, there is no doubt in Josie Altidore's mind that this ball is not hitting the back of the goal. That is a confident striker. And when Fabian Johnson is in the final third more consistently, good things happen. Great finish. And it's finishing like that that took him to the stop, top of the scoring charts in Holland that persuaded Paolo De Cani of Sunderland to splash out on him. And it's finishing like that. It's just created a new record for the United States. He's the first player in history, Taylor, to score in five consecutive games for the United States national team. Landon Donovan had done four twice. Eddie Johnson has scored in four twice. It's just such a clinical finish, though, Adrian. It's one-touch preparation with the right foot and then bury it, side netting with the left. Oh, what a complete and utter turnaround in the space of... Uh, Less than 15 minutes at the start of the second half. Two two in Sarajevo. You know, the more Adrian I watch Fabian Johnson play forward, play wide in the midfield, it, it's just that's where he needs to play. I'm not sure he's that good of a left back, but look at the Panama game in Seattle, how dangerous he was. He creates so many problems because he's naturally left footed. The first half, who did they have playing there? It was Eddie Johnson. When someone's naturally left-footed, it's easy to play that ball first time. He's much more comfortable going forward. Stevanovic is Bosnia trying to answer quite some game we have in our hands now. Jurgen Klinsmann again getting his tactics and his changes spot on. Some more changes coming for the home team. Medujanin and Visha are going to come on. And it means the end of the evening for Miralem Pjanic. Spahic with the corner, but uh, easily claimed by Tim Howard. Castillo. Edgar Castillo, one of the two uh, Tijuana players, called up. Joe Corona is also available tonight. change so Kanovic is the man to depart for Edin Visha Visha who plays in Turkey with Istanbul like the man who also just came on Medujanin who plays for Gazantienspor 
Eichmänner, wo der Christian Dahl ist, der hier die Tabelle nicht besser war. Well, Eddie Johnson has played his part and uh, another momentous occasion here, another debut for the United States as Alan Johansson has come on. This substitution is fueled by Gatorade. Alejandro Bedoya is the man to make way for Joe Corona. And Adrian, give Eddie Johnson a ton of credit. It was a slow first half, comes out in the second half, gets that team rolling with that early goal. Worked along the back line. So the Aaron Johansson era begins. Here he is, trying to uh, apply the pressure. The man who was born in Alabama, uh, moved to Iceland at the age of three, represented Iceland at under-21 level, and applied for that one-time FIFA switch, and received a lot of heat in Iceland for doing so, Taylor. But do you blame him? No. I think the irony is, though, he's the replacement for Josie Altidore in Holland. He certainly is. As Ed Alkmaar played alongside him for uh, six months last year and has started this new season in fine fettle, Johansson. There he is with the layoff. A couple of goals in consecutive games, the start of the Dutch season. Altador forcing Zahirovic to backtrack. Now, ESPN's presentation of US soccer is brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible. Two, two. Just about 20 minutes into the second half. And just as we were saying, the United States win streak was in jeopardy. They've made me eat my words immediately. What a turnaround in this second half. But wait, here come Bosnia again. Tim Howard had to react. Down low. It was Visha who was on his way through. A substitute. There's a lot of them out there, let's face it, for Bosnia. Medujanin. Looking for the inside track, cutting back to the outside. Brad Evans, though, wasn't about to bite. Joe Corona. Joe Benny Corona to give him his full name. Surely the, the best name in U.S. soccer. See, now you've had two substitutions for the United States come in. It's very important. One of them, a new player, and then a young one in Corona. Where's the communication been on set pieces here? Johansson coming in for Eddie Johnson. It's very important that they communicate their switches. Oh, there's another save to deal with for Tim Howard. And deal with it, he did. Sharp shot from Visha. US captain on the night, Tim Howard. It's just a good little run. Good little run in behind Jekko. And how about the one-handed save from Tim Howard? No matter what, Tim Howard has to come up with one or two saves a game when the United States won a big result on the road. Now then, Johansson. Oh, he slipped that through nicely. Altidore. Well, it was neither one thing nor the other in the end, but it's been kept in play on the far side by Corona. Good looking pass, though, from Aaron Johansson, wasn't it? Sliced it through for Altidore, who was in the clear.
Later on tonight, ESPN2 has more international soccer for you. It's Mexico and Gio Dos Santos taking on Ivory Coast and Didier Drogba tonight at 9. ESPN2 also live on the Watch ESPN app. Well, and we've seen John Brooks, we've seen Aaron Johansson. Well, guess what? Mexico's doing the same thing. Tonight, calling in some naturalized Mexicans, and you just have the feeling that Chepo de la Torre is on the ropes right now for Mexico. Yeah. Well, that uh, September the date, 10th date, is looming very large, isn't it, in Columbus? Three points for the U.S. in Costa Rica will have them right on the verge of qualifying. Little variation from the corner, driven in, and a little deflection could have gone anywhere. It was out the door. We've got a piece of it. Tim Howard applauding his efforts. Medujanin sending his shot, fizzing towards goal. Good recognition from Jermaine Jones there because he came from a deep line position to make sure he just gave any kind of pressure he could. A big moment this for Sasha Kleshton who's about to come on for the US. Kleshton's telling the fourth official right there, listen, I have to wear that bandage. My ear fell off in Belgium. <laughs> I don't know if he understands though. That's the I don't problem. Think so. well, interesting corner here. There's no one. From Bosnia in the penalty area. Michael Bradley wants the substitution to happen. So does referee Skomina, it appears. <laughs> Sasha Kleschen, whose father grew up just over the mountains here from Sarajevo. He has uh, family roots throughout the Balkan region and actually played in this stadium when he uh, came back to visit his father. With the Sarajevo under 16 and under 17 teams a decade ago. Kleshton is going to come on for Jones. So this substitution fueled by Gatorade. That's still no attackers in the penalty area. Here they come. Avisha, some space to work with. And another corner to deal with for the US. Can they hold firm here? As Bosnia threatened to work up ahead of steam. Trying to regain the lead that's been taken away from them. Simovic with the corner. Second ball pops out and is eventually cleared. Johansson, some good foraging work. Flourish and flair from Medujani, which the crowd rather enjoys. Testing period this for the US. Kleshton helping out with the defensive work. Bradley needs to find an outlet. Cameron finally to safely safety. Cameron will begin his second Premier League campaign against Liverpool for Stoke City on Saturday. And in Jacko and John Brooks all in a tangle. Brooks ending up on the wrong end of the decision. I have absolutely no problem with this though. It's a 20 year old kid manning up against Jacko. Not backing down from any kind of physical battle whatsoever. Yes, it's in a dangerous position, but you know what? This is his debut. Get stuck in, get involved, be his man, be a center back. No problem here. Oh, whatever the final score 
The performance of John Brooks is going to be a huge positive to take out of this game for Jurgen Klinsmann. Another option in that all-important centre-back position would be very nice indeed. As the free kick is delivered, Howard at full stretch was worried. Misimovic wasn't too far away. He's their second all-time leading scorer behind Edin Dzeko. That was hit with pace, but Tim Howard so quick on his feet. I'm not sure if that's on goal. Tim Howard doesn't have it. And I know people right now are telling me on Twitter that John Brooks gave up a dangerous foul, but for a kid in the debut going against a big, strong superstar in Dzeko up front, I'd rather have that than just sit there and allow Dzeko to have the ball simply easily. Castillo, Clashton. Altidore. Beyond the reach of Johansson, but the attack still very much on. Johansson again, lovely move. Aaron Johansson! Oh, that would have been some way to announce his arrival. And the U.S. national team set it up for himself beautifully, Taylor. Well, and on one end, we're talking about Brooks in his debut. Johansson's come into this game and been dangerous right from the beginning. We saw us pass him behind to Josie Altidore, and then that little deft touch inside the 18 to create his own opportunity. There are four newcomers called into the squad. By Jürgen Klinsmann, Bobby Wood, and goalkeeper Cody Croppert with the other two. Two we have seen, and both suggested they are going to be able to bring something to the mix. Now, coming up next on ESPN 2, don't go anywhere. It's the latest edition of our brand new studio show, ESPN FC. We'll have plenty of highlights from around the world. A big day of international friendly action to recap for you that's as soon as we get off the air here Sarajevo Brooks back to Tim Howard some have suggested he might perhaps be facing some competition now from Joel Robles who's been signed by Roberto Martinez to provide some competition in the goalkeeping department for Everton. Clashed it back to Bradley. Touch from Altidore. Bradley taking over. Still feel this game is there for the winning, don't you, for either team. Clashton, who scored a cracker of the goal over the weekend for Anderlecht. In a win against Ghent in Belgium. Again, a sharp touch from Johansson. He has looked lively. Still going, Johansson! Well, he weaved his way into a beautiful position. And now the US have cause for concern at the other end. They call him Aaron Bacon, Taylor. Aaron Johansson. Well, he's Kevin Bacon's twin, but I'm going to tell you right now, I just, just figured like out, Kevin Bacon. I just figured out why Iceland is up in arms about him leaving. <laughs> How quick was that first touch and turn? Now the uh, Icelandic uh, FA chief was one of the most vocal critics of his move, saying he was only interested in the money. This ties to the U.S. have remained strong, Taylor. Despite moving back to Iceland at an early age, his family came back to Florida every year on holiday. Then spent a period of time at Bradenton. 
Well, and it's not like the United States and Aaron Johansson are the only people doing it as well. He was born here. Right. A shot from distance, which Howard is able to smother with relative ease. From Masimovic, who now uh, plays his club football in China. Bosnia and Herzegovina crowd trying to whip up their team for a late assault, which in their two goal lead of Apparage. But Adrian, right now, the feeling in the stadium, the atmosphere, the scoreline, this is why you play this kind of friendly before the World Cup. Now, Jacko was tripped. Well, again, it was Brooks. Jacko was trying to burst through that gap between Cameron and Brooks. US defenders suggesting that perhaps Checo made the most of it. Let's have a look. I think he probably did. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. I mean, Jeff Cameron's barely near him and just that little touch, but that's the experience of Checo, and we've seen it all game long. It looked more like they tangled feet, if anything, but now it's a dangerous spot. Oh, Michael Parkhurst is... Uh, Going to be introduced. It's not for Brad Evans, though. It's for uh, Fabian Johnson, it appears. So Parker's on to win his 22nd cap. The former New England Revolution player. Struggling to get playing time in Germany at the moment with Augsburg's. Simovic stands over this for Bosnia. Menacing position. Curler off the wall. And gently into the hands of Tim Howard, who celebrates as if they just scored. Well, Parkhurst has slotted into his normal right-sided position. Yep, and Evans pushed forward in front of him playing right midfield, which then allows Joe Corona to switch sides and move to the left-hand side. Ten minutes to go. Still all up for grabs in terms of the honours in this friendly. 2-2, of course, would be a very decent result. It's the side ranked at number 13 in the world by FIFA for the United States, but they would love to keep this win streak going, wouldn't they? Jürgen Klinsmann has tried to uh, brush it aside, saying it's not important, Taylor, to win 11 in a row, but it's no bad thing either. No, but it's right in the middle if you really think about it. I mean, you're still 10 months from Brazil, so I hate to be Captain Obvious, but the reality is, listen, 10 months from now is what's really important, and I think that's why Jürgen has had that message about the winning streak. I think he also recognizes that it was achieved against the likes of you know, Belize and Cuba and El Salvador. You know, I'm watching the last 30 seconds here. Castillo and Joe Corona have to be on the same page because if Castillo wants to go forward... Well, they're going forward here. Parkhurst did well. If Castillo wants to go forward, then Joe Corona has to make sure he steps in and covers up that backhand side. This is part of playing friendlies in hostile environments. How do you manage this game and see how to result? Here's Edgar Castillo. Four awaiting in the penalty area. Back it goes to Kleshton. Hangs it up in the air. A good win in the air. Well, it looked like a clean win for Brad Evans. He seems as mystified as I am about that decision. Well, blood is flowing. And one of the Bosnian defenders, and that's why. Perhaps the flailing arm from Joe Corona. It's Versajevic, who was the victim. Bosnia will play home and away against Slovakia in September, while the United States are taking on Costa Rica and Mexico.
Bosnia perhaps had the benefit of a relatively soft group by European standards. Greece were their main challengers. Here's Johansson trying to challenge the back line again. He's done nothing but that since he came on. Castillo. He's tripped. This is going to be a free kick for the United States. And fairly potent territory after Castillo's good work. When you had thought that Castillo did a good job of pushing that position and hoping that he knocked it out wide to Joe Corona in on the left-hand side, but now it's a dangerous set piece coming forward. We saw a couple of these in the first half with Josie either taking it. Listen, Jeff Cameron, Brooks coming forward, maybe on that back post. Who knows? And now it's... Uh... Asmir Begovic, who has to uh, get his defensive ramparts organized, four-man wall. And a lot of uh, activity on the edge of that wall as well, as Josie Altidore stands over it. Five straight games with a goal, all ready for Altidore. Now a Carlo! Yes! He's done it again! Josie Altidore! And the United States have come back from Two down to lead 3-2 in Sarajevo. It has been an unbelievable summer for number 17, Josie Altidore. We even saw it in the first half. Him stepping up, he's so confident. He's taken set pieces, he's taken everybody on. Really? Any questions? Calm, cool, collected over that free kick. No doubt about it. That hits the back of the net, and the U.S. is up 3-2. Stunning. Simply stunning from Altidore. I mean, when was the last time you saw Josie Altidore take a free kick? We saw it a couple times in his younger days with the New York Red Bulls and maybe an Adidas commercial here or there, but unbelievable. Six Hit is confident. In five games, and who saw this coming at halftime, Taylor? What a remarkable turnaround by Jürgen Klinsmann's side. When it's all been on the shoulders of Josie Altidore, the first touch, assist to Eddie Johnson, and then two great finishes. What were we saying about that win streak? Let's not count any chickens, but 3-2 with five minutes to go in Sarajevo. This would be truly remarkable. Safet Susic must be wondering just what has happened. His team... Fairly comfortably in control at the break. But that has been swept away. And you said it even with the first goal. Tell you have to credit the uh, tactical changes. It couldn't get better yet. Yeah, it's Josie Altidore and the hat trick! Josie Altidore having one of the games of his life for the United States. Three goals in this second half, and Jürgen Klinsmann's team have turned this completely around. What a result this will be. And Adrian, when you watch this goal, this is very similar to the goal in Seattle versus Panama. And watch Michael Bradley, because this ball is turned over in the midfield. And Michael Bradley makes a 30-yard run off the ball. He is the second or third run coming out of the midfield. Sasha Kleshin does a wonderful job of just getting a touch on it. And Josie Altidore times that run, slows it down perfectly so he's onside. And how about a hat trick? How about a hat trick? Josie Altidore has upped his tally to 20 career goals for the United States. And this, if they can see this out, will be the first time ever that the United States have come from behind to win on European soil. You can't state it enough, though. If Michael Bradley does not make that 30 to 35 yard run, then Josie Altidore doesn't even get a chance. Bosnia and Herzegovina two, the United States four here in Sarajevo and some of the crowd disbelievingly starting to drift away. They didn't see this coming.
I think I would buy a ticket right now to be in one of these halftime discussions with Jurgen Klinsman and the team. I mean, that first half, you saw it was just no one was really involved from the United States. Bosnia completely dominated it. He comes out, yeah, okay, he changes the formation, but there was an energy, there was a life to the United States going forward. Four goals. Everything changed with that move to 4-4-2. And yes, you can point to the fact that Bosnia made numerous changes themselves and have never had the same sort of flow, have they, in the second half. But against a team ranked 13 in the world, don't let that detract from this turnaround. And the results have just got better and better for Jürgen Klinsmann and his team and the European adventures. He started off with defeats against France and Belgium. And this will be four undefeated in a row on European soil and the best result of a lot of them, really. Yes, the 1-0 win in Italy was great, but the manner in which this has been achieved, Taylor, is what is so startling. Yeah, but it's hard It's hard not to just keep talking about Josie Altidore because this time last year, we're listening to Jurgen Klinsmann, U.S. soccer fans, the American outlaws are all concerned about the form Josie Altidore is in, and Jurgen Klinsmann challenged him at the club level. What does he do? He goes on and scores 31 goals. Yeah. And that's continued this summer. You just hope that this form continues for Sunderland. Okay. Because Tim Howard said it five days ago, Adrian, he's the moneymaker for the United States national team going to Brazil. People have been worried, haven't they, about his potential playing time. It's under, I, I didn't share those concerns at all, Taylor. I think he's going to be number one starter up front, no doubt about it. I think Paolo Di Canio, the Sunderland manager, will be able to tease the very best out of Altador. As this cross comes in, oh, the flicked header reminds us that it's not quite over yet. Heading Dzeko with his second of the game. Oh, seven goals here in Sarajevo. And a lesson for John Brooks at the international level. A class striker can just lull you to sleep, and it's just a little two-yard run in a touch. John Brooks will learn as he plays these games more and more, but the second you get caught ball-watching, a player like Jekko makes you pay. That's a difficult finish, made look very easy, and this game ain't over, Adrian. No. We wait to see how much stoppage time have been, has been added on. Michael Parkhurst saw that ball stay in play via the corner flag there, and the U.S. will have to regroup and just solidify here. We still have forward intentions, though. This is Johansson. Plenty forward on the attack. The cross never reached them. Sunic getting it clear. And now they will retreat and try and protect what they've earned here. Brooks. Back to Howard. Versajevic. Joe Corona making life difficult there for Stefanovic. A couple of balls on the pitch delaying the restart, much to the consternation of the locals. It's been a long time since they lost at home. Bosnia and Herzegovina they have to go back to September of 2010. Almost fully three years since France beat them. Here's Altidor. Johansson with room to roam. Decides to put the brakes on this time.
Some really good killing of the Bosnian momentum here. Well, the moment the whistle blows, I can guarantee you Jurgen Klinsmann will go to Ern Johansson right there. He had an opportunity to whip in the ball. But there's a little experience there, realizing, listen, there's only one attacker inside that 18. Let's pull back. Kill the game yep. a little bit. And because of that, they ate up uh, nearly another 40, 50 seconds on the clock. That's pumped long by Agovic, but unchallenged header away from Cameron. Altidore. Kleshton, who has uh, 20 family members here, and they have seen him play a part in a historic win for the United States here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's 12 straight games now for Jurgen Klinsmann, and how unlikely that looks after 45 minutes. A quite astonishing turnaround in this second half, led by Eddie Johnson initially, and then a hat-trick from Josie Altidore, who writes his own name into the record books. What an evening here in Sarajevo, and plenty to digest now for Bob Lee and Alexi Lalas. As we said, all right, granted, Bosnia made four changes at the half. They made all six of their substitutions. Maybe they don't have great depth. Oh, but against the choice. number oh, 13 on. team at home and three goals in 27 minutes for Jonesy Altidore and his second career hat trick. Eddie Johnson to talk about the change in the formation. What a moment for this team. Absolutely. Uh, for Al Josie Altidore. Uh, I think at, at halftime we talked about how um, the players that aren't here don't want to be part of this game. Uh, now they're jumping on. Well, they don't want to be part of the first half, but that second half, absolutely incredible. We judge coaches on the adjustments that they make and the substitutions that they make throughout the game. And Jurgen Klinsmann comes up for this second half. Whatever he said at halftime, amazing. Josie Altidore. Uh, the way uh, Michael Bradley took over the game uh, in a creative role, playing those uh, those wonderful balls forward. Josie, look at this first touch. Boom, right into his stride, and then he doesn't even think about it. That is a man who's just playing with incredible confidence. And free so kicks. So, look at this. Okay, I'll take free kicks. Not and a problem. He had not taken earlier free kicks well in this match. He that knows. one. He's was, feeling it. Yeah. He's feeling it. And it just keeps coming. And Bradley. Look at this nice little pass. From subtle. Whoop. There you go. And just look at the weight on that pass. In a split second, he's able to do all the different calculations and hit that perfect ball for Josie Altador, timing his run perfectly. So for Josie Altador, for Michael Bradley, those, people, those guys are going to be there. When you look at it as a game and you take some perspective as to the new players uh, that came in, Aaron Johansson, was fun to see him come. Very in. active. Very, very active. New. It's a, it's a new type of situation. I think Jurgen Klinsmann, when he goes back and looks at this game, he will say, all right, there are some definite positives, and there's also a positive in terms of the collective being able to come out after halftime and after a half that wasn't good, make the adjustments. It's interesting, they go back to that 4-4-2, uh, the most comfortable formation for years for the U.S., coming back to that 4-4-2 where you generate opportunities and the team just seems so, more, so much more comfortable, which begs the question, do you start a game like that? Or is it just a function of being able to adjust at a certain point, and more often than not, they're adjusting to when they're down to That's that. That's right. First cap for Brooks, first cap for Johansson. Brooks beaten late on that third goal, Checo's second of the game. But uh, your, your assessment of his play, first game, central defense? Uh, I don't think that right now he is should be penciled in as a starter. I don't think that Omar Gonzalez and Matt Beasler and those types of players who have been there uh, need to be worried. He looks young. He looks raw. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how quickly he can adapt because I think Jurgen Klinsmann is going to keep uh, coming in. I don't think that after this game you say, this guy has absolutely no future. This is definitely one to watch. And once again, increases that depth and that competition at each and every position. Klinsmann has played 61 different players for the United States national team since taking over two years ago. And for the first time, a come from behind victory, not just a result, a victory for the United States on European soil in Sarajevo. Much more to tell you about, then we'll send you off to ESPN FC as we wrap it up in just a moment.
In the wake of the 4-3 win, the good hand save, the All-State good hand save, 67th minute in a 2-2 match. Aiden Vizic and, oh, Tim Howard lays out. And that's important, not just because he makes the save, but he keeps the team in so that they can go on and do what they did. He stops Viscus. So at that point, it was still 2-2, a final of 4-3. Friendly, yes, but a lot taken from today's match and assessments made. Now the deadly, serious business of World Cup qualification. We all have complete coverage on SportsCenter and all our platforms of the match in Costa Rica, September 6th. Columbus, you'll see it right here on ESPN, U.S., Mexico, then home in Kansas City against Jamaica, and then the final match at Panama. The United States leading the Hex, the six-team group, certainly in great shape at this moment, and 12 consecutive victories, longest current streak in the world, all the positive, 61 con uh, players, as we said, that uh, Jurgen Klinsmann has called in, and a depth coalescing. And in the past year, if you were to hear a couple of things about the U.S. national team, the team needs goals and has to solidify the back line. You don't hear that so much anymore. No, and I think now that Jurgen Klinsmann has, has seen what has happened, he's going to go back and look at these last five months. I mean, we're talking about a game today that didn't have Dempsey, Donovan, Beasley, Gonzalez, Zuzli, right. Beezer, these types of players that have been at what Jurgen Klinsmann has called the top in terms of the qualifying, where he puts the pecking order. But now he's going to look at everything and have to go back and find out what his best starting 11 is. And it's a great, great problem to have. In the past, we've talked about the fact that there hasn't been enough competition for spots. There hasn't been enough depth. So this was a, this was a great great moment and those guys at home that are sitting there uh, saying okay well that type of competition we'll see what happens when they one, get together again. The one name inked in certainly in gold Tim Howard the captain today just a few moments ago in Sarajevo speaking with Roger Bennett what did you say to the team at home? <laughs> not much you know we just there was a few a few tactical adjustments but you know our attitude needed to change we needed to get better and more aggressive and we did that but it was you know it was a collective effort it wasn't just me Hell of a performance in Europe. At the same time, it's just a friendly. Yeah. What can we really take from this? It is just a friendly, but as you said, before, you know, you never discount really good performances. And uh, we'll take it. We'll build from it. We'll grow. Uh, this is gonna. This is gonna do us a world of good going down to Costa Rica. Congratulations, Thank Tim. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. What a road this U.S. team has traveled. The loss in Honduras starting this, this phase of qualification. Heads were down, and now leading the group, and with a friendly that makes a statement around the globe. Absolutely, but now it's for real. Yeah. So it's, good, it's going to be fun to see uh, now that these qualifiers coming back with all the good stuff that has happened over the six months. That's all been wonderfully positive. Now they got to use it. Down to play the Ticos and then home against Mexico and Columbus in Ohio. That's on September the 10th. We're standing by now to send you to ESPN.